All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. This is Attorney Momita Rahman. I'm here to talk immigration with you. I'm here live to answer your questions because I know that immigration is really complicated and many of you are out here looking for answers. You're looking for information. And I would like to be able to give you as much as I can without needing to go into a consultation. But of course, when you have difficult immigration questions, be sure to give us a call so we can take a look at your case and have that consultation properly. But one question that I got today, which many of you might have right now is, can an LPR, which is a green card holder, petition for a child? And the answer is yes. If that child is under 21, a green card holder can petition for their child. Whether that child is inside the US or out to the US, that's going to make a big difference. Now, if the child is inside the US, and the parent is only a green card holder, then that child may not be eligible to get a green card if they are out of status and have unlawful presence. However, once the parent becomes a US citizen, then it becomes a little bit easier. But let's say, for example, that you are a green card holder and your child is outside the US, can you petition for them? Yes, it is a little bit easier. However, the process does take time and you have to keep an eye on the visa bulletin to make sure that the priority date for that category is still current. All right. So if you have a question, please make sure you drop it into the box. I'm going live on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So make sure you put in your question and I'm going to do my best to answer as many questions as I can today. So let's see. And hello to everyone. Hi. Um, hello, good evening. And I, for those of you who are in New York, uh, I hope you guys are okay. We had a lot of flooding happen in New York because of the rain uh, coming from Hurricane Ida. And I hope everyone's safe. I know there's been a lot of damage. Um, all right, let's see what's going on. Ada uh, Jebby is asking, uh, are the essential workers included in the budget reconciliation? Please answer. Yes, uh, I believe that for the uh, the plan that, well, actually, we don't actually know, um, Ali, uh, Ada, we don't actually know what who is going to be included in the budget reconciliation because they haven't actually released the actual text of this bill. All we know is that it's passed the House and all it needs is a vote in the Senate by the Democrats. That's, that's what we know so far. But my hunch is that it will include essential workers, DACA, TPS, and farm workers, okay? Uh, Alicia, hello. Um, all right, let's look over here. Um, from NS, when one has an interview for an I-71 and N-400 together, and a year later is invited for another round of interview, the interview the first time went so smooth, does it happen often? Uh, good question, that's actually interesting. Now, if they have called you back for another interview, that probably means that they want to see if your marriage is still together, uh, it, you know, it's not, I don't think it's actually as usual. I don't know why it happens in your case, Sayad, but definitely it may happen. And if they are doing it, then they probably want to make sure uh, that they can give you a decision on the I-751 based upon joint marriage. And speaking of that, guys, this week we just had approved three I-751s for uh, requesting waivers due to extreme cruelty and battery and divorce. It is amazing. Uh, we had two approved without an interview after receiving requests for evidence. And I just had one approved today after an interview for a client for whom we filed an I-751 uh, waiver due to extreme cruelty and abuse. And this client, let me tell you what a wonderful client I have, cannot disclose their name, but it was a marriage where the client suffered both uh, emotional and physical abuse. And my client was uh, a man, he's a male, uh, and also in a same sex marriage. And, you know, a lot of people come to me saying that, you know, I've been told by other lawyers that there's no hope in my case because I don't have X, Y, and Z evidence, or they say that, uh, you know, I just want to give up. I'm so tired of being in the situation that I'd rather get supported than have to go through all this stuff. But listen, there is hope out there and there are attorneys that can help. And uh, we got it approved. We got it approved. And the other I-751 that I got approved earlier this week was for a client who had previously been denied their I-751 that was filed by a different lawyer. Now, look, an I-751, having a lawyer who knows what they're doing makes a big difference. 
because that client who had previously had their I-751 application denied ended up in removal proceedings because of that denial. So I am representing this client both for a new I-751 filing as well as in court. Now, thanks be to God, we got this one approved and now we're going to be able to ask for termination in, of her case in court. So have hope. Give us a call 212-248-7907 if you have a complicated I-751, if you have a two-year green card, your marriage has not worked out, you think you don't have enough evidence, anything that's happening, give us a call. Um, all right. What about, uh, let's see. What about advanced parole? How does the overstay before filing for a green card affect if advanced parole was approved? All right. Uh, and somebody has just uh, commented that there's no sound. If, if you can't hear me, please let me know. I apologize for that, but please let me know. All right. So if you have received an advanced parole in your case and you are overstayed before, or even if you entered without permission, you should be fine. However, if you have any criminal issues and you travel on advanced parole, that may be a problem when you return. Similarly, if you become ineligible or inadmissible for some other reason after you leave the country, then that can be a problem to getting in as well. But generally speaking, if you have no other issues, you have, you know, your main problem is just that you're an overstay, you have filed for advanced parole, you've been approved, you may, you should be fine, but always consult with a lawyer before you travel. Okay. Let's see uh, what other questions I have. Hi, can a green card holder petition for a spouse who is already inside the U.S. from Minister Harley? So this is a good question for those of you who are green card holders and you want to petition for your U.S. citizen spouse. You uh, are in uh, your spouse will be in a preference category. Moreover, they also need to be in status and not have any unlawful presence or an authorized work in order to adjust status. Now, if your spouse is inside the US, you are a green card holder and they're out of status, then the best thing is for you to become a US citizen and then petition for them. Because once you are a US citizen, whether your spouse is out of status or if they have uh, any unauthorized work, those then end up becoming not an issue. Is there any good news for people who are stuck in the USA during COVID, but not with special status from Kobe Sana? Kobe, I don't actually, there's, there's no change in the laws at all right now. Um, let's see. I'm working as an au pair on the J-1 visa. Do you think I'll be able to adjust my status if the budget passes uh, from Georgia? Um, Georgia. As an au pair, uh, you may be subject to a two-year home residency requirement for which you would need a waiver. Now, for the budget reconciliation, we don't know exactly who is going to be covered because the actual text of the what would be included in the bill it has not been released. It has not yet been written yet. Once we do get it released, I'll be sure to do a video to explain more about what it includes. Hello, Pierre. Um, okay. Uh, hi, what if my wife is a citizen? Can she petition my son? He just turned 18, but me and my wife have been married for eight years from Luz Vida. Luz, if your wife is a citizen and you have a child, then technically your child is considered to be your wife's child for the purpose of immigration as long as you and your wife got married before your child turned 18. However, your wife will need to file directly for your child to help them get their green card. Give us a call if you need help with this case. Um, how long does it take for spouse visas nowadays from Salman? Salman, this is my number one question that I get. It's how long will my case take? How long will this take? Well, the answer is that it depends. Depends on where you live and what category. Now, if you're a U.S. citizen filing for a spouse and the spouse is inside the U.S., then your case processing time will actually be controlled by uh, basically where you live. Where do you live? Because your field office has a wait time for interviews. And depending on how long those interviews might take, sometimes you might end up waiting only a few months. Uh, you know, for example, I know that whenever I have my interviews in Philadelphia or San Antonio, uh, these interviews can take less than six months to get. 
But for my cases in New York City, we're ending up waiting a year to more than a year for an appointment. And that is really the controlling factor. If you are filing for a spouse who is inside the U.S., your processing time will mostly be controlled by the field office because of the fact that your local immigration field office only has a, a small number of officers. And depending on how many applications come in and need to be interviewed for, that's why there ends up becoming a long wait time or a short wait time. Hello, I'm so excited today. I went for my green card interview. Everything went well. I got approved for 10 years from Lee Immortal. Uh, congratulations to you, Lee. I'm really happy to hear that. A 10-year green card is amazing to get. Of course, that is the dream for everyone. And once you have it, protect it, keep it, apply for citizenship as soon as you can. Do I still need an attorney if reconciliation bill is passed at the Senate if you're undocumented uh, from Joseph and Kruma? Uh, well, my opinion is that you need an immigration attorney for almost everything. And of course, there's a lot of things that you can do by yourself, but immigration attorneys are there to help interpret the law and how it applies to you. We don't just fill out forms. Anyone can fill out forms, but mostly it is an attorney who can tell you if the form is uh, allowed to be filled out this way or not, or how something might affect you or how something in your history might affect uh, or might be affected by the answer that you put down. That is our job. And I do believe that immigration attorneys are going to be useful and necessary in almost every step of the way. Of course, everyone has their own opinion about this, but we'll see what the bill says and whether you might be able to do things yourself. Um, okay. Uh, uh, señorita, buenas tardes. Mi, si mi esposa es ciudadana, puede pedir a mi hijo. Él acaba de cumplir uh, 18, pero... Pero yo y mi esposa y yo hemos estado casados por ocho años. Ok, uh, Luz, uh, uh, creo que yo, uh, yo, pregunto, yo, yo pregunté esta uh, pregunta uh, cinco minutos ago, <laughs> uh, pero uh, 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 espero que uh, es, uh, es un buen pregunta. Uh, 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 es, es un buen pregunta, and I hope that this, this answer that I gave helps you. Okay. Uh, Sarah, hi. Um, okay. Are all the I-130s across the countries nowadays go to Texas Service Center from NSIO? So it really depends on the category of the I-130. There are a bunch of different categories for which I-130s can be filed, and it will depend, that will determine which service center it goes to. Uh, Luz Vida, what time would be the best to contact you, Luz? You can call us anytime. Anyone who's watching, you can call us 24 hours a day. We always have people answering the phones. However, I know that right now my assistant Josue, who is uh, bilingual, he speaks Spanish. He is there right now. And Luz, you can give us a call right now and he'll be able to answer your call. What are the chances of getting an RFE in VAWA after applied since 13 months now? From Sunny Val. Um, the chances of getting a, an RFE in a VAL really depends on how much evidence you filed, how good your affidavit was, and whether you've been able to establish it. Now, if it's about, I would say if you get, if you file for VAWA, you can expect to get the heavy RFE. If you, if you are to get it, you would probably get it between 18 months and 24 months. Um, James Bob's asking, good evening. My wife has a green card. Can she apply for a work permit for me? From James Bot. James, if you are in status and you have not worked without authorization and your wife is a green card holder, then yes, right now the category for spouses of green card holders is current. So you may be able to apply. However, if you are out of status, James, then you will need to wait for your wife to become a citizen. And then at that time, she can help you file for a green card and also help you get a work permit. But however, James, if you are suffering, anyone here who is married to a green card holder or to a U.S. citizen, if you have been suffering certain problems in your relationship, including your husband or your wife has become very controlling, they expect you to do things, they get angry at you for the smallest of things, they make problems with you over how much money you make, uh, or they keep saying that you should go back to your home country. They're going to call the police on you. They're going to call immigration on you, and you are not feeling comfortable in your relationship. 
then give us a call because we may be able to help you file for a green card and a work permit now, even if you're out of status, even if you entered without permission, even if you have other immigration problems. So the best thing to do is call us 212-248-7907 so I can take a look at your case, James, to see if you might be eligible to apply right now instead of waiting for them to become a U.S. citizen. Um, okay. What is the meaning of cases ready to be scheduled for an interview and how long does it normally take to schedule the interview? I'm in Florida. Kimoy. All that it really means is that your case has been found to be documentarily qualified basically by the service center and they've forwarded your case to the field office where you live. Now, how long it takes to actually get the interview after your case is passed over there really depends on how busy that field office is in terms of giving out interview appointments. So you can check it online. Actually, you can check the case processing time online for that field office itself. Is it true that we need to get the COVID vaccine in order to get the green card from Arturo? Yes, Arturo, yes. As of October 1st, all persons applying for a green card must be fully vaccinated. So you are not yet fully vaccinated or you have not taken any even one vaccine. Get it done now because it is going to be required beginning October 1st. And that also means that you need to have full COVID-19 vaccination before you go for your medical exam. So if it takes about a full month to become vaccinated, you better start now so that you have enough time and you don't have any delays before your medical exam. Um, I'm in the military. Would that help if my parents get a green card? They live in Mexico from Eliborio. Eliborio, thank you for your service. So uh, it may help. Uh, we may be able to request certain expedites of your case, but if your parents are in Mexico, it may not help them as much. Also, we need to look to see what your parents previous immigration history is? Do they have multiple entries uh, with permission, without permission into the U.S., any permanent bar issues? Then being in the military may not help with that. However, if your parents are in the U.S. and you're in the military or you're a vet and you want to see if you can help them, then you you know it may also work that way too. If your parents did not enter with permission and you're in the military, then we may be able to help them get something called military parole in place. And what military parole in place does is that essentially erases, basically it kind of like forgives that illegal entry into the U.S. so that your parents can go ahead and do their adjustment of status. However, if your parents have other issues like permanent bar, which means that they were here for a while and then they left the U.S. and they came back illegally maybe once, maybe twice, then that may be an issue. It is really important to always have a consultation to make sure that the parent's full history is covered, to make sure they're properly eligible for this sort of a case. And if they're not, then what I like to do is I like to look to see what else they might qualify for, because there are actually a few different case types that do not require a person to have a legal entry into the U.S. These are special humanitarian cases, including VAWA, T visas and U visas. So if they're not eligible for Section 245I or military parole in place, then I look at these as well. So the best thing is to give us a call. Um, all right. So Sarah is saying, hi, do you think that first in, first out will be replaced with first in, first out? Um, for asylum cases, I'm presuming, I do not know. They have not made any announcements about that. I think that they're going to keep the current uh, process the way that it is. Um, all right, so that's it. Uh, let me check my YouTube. Mo Abedi is also asking the same question. Well, last, when I didn't understand what this acronym meant, this must be something that you guys are doing. Lawyers don't use these, these acronyms. L-I-F-O with F-I-F-O, which means last in, first out replace with first in, first out. All right, this is an asylum question. So my asylees, please listen to this. First in, first out means that basically the interviews on an asylum case are given as soon as uh, for the cases on a first in, first out basis, basically first come, first serve. So as soon as you file your asylum application, basically get in line. But a new, a, a new uh, process was started a few years ago underneath Trump called last in first out, which means that the very basically they kind of put a put a, they put a hold 
on all of the asylum applications that were filed by 2017. And then from that point on, every single asylum application that was filed ended up getting their interviews first, which meant the first, you know, last in, first out. What this was meant to do is that it was meant to prevent people from filing asylum applications and then being able to stay here for years because that's usually how long it was taking to get interviews. And then thus they would be able to get a work permit and all of those things. So in theory, last in, first out is meant to prevent people from getting a work permit because when you file an asylum application, you have to wait 150 days to get your work permit. But is this going to be replaced? And all I can say is that I do not know. I have been filing many asylum applications. I've had interviews for some right away. I've had, I'm still waiting uh, now, sometimes a year, sometimes uh, less than a year for an interview. And it seems that it's all over the place. The policy is all over the place and there's no telling what it will be. And of course, COVID-19 has had an impact on when interviews get scheduled. So you can definitely expect some delays. Um, okay, Alberto Robles, uh, uh, una pregunta, abogada. Uh, hace uh, un mes me llegó el permiso de viaje. Más o menos cuando llega el permiso de trabajo, estoy por Bawa. Uh, mi abogado metió todo junto. Uh, ok, uh, Alberto, es muy interesante. Um, normalmente, uh, las dos uh, uh, arriba uh, uh, junto, juntos, ¿sí? Um, pero si su permiso no, uh, no llega, then um, I would say uh, más o menos... Uh, dos o tres meses más. Uh, uh, sí, yes, it will probably, Alberto, it will probably take maybe a few more months to get your work permit, okay? I hope that helps. Gracias por su pregunta. Um, okay. Can you transfer your wife's CR1 to another country as embassy told me it is not working on a regular basis and they would rather cancel the scheduled interview from Fal Chaudhry? Well, yes, you may be able to request a transfer to a different country, but you also need to have permission to be in that country to be able to have your interview. Now, that's the big problem for most people. If you have certain visas to go to a different country, then you can ask for a transfer. However, the transfer can take several months. And also the consulate has to agree usually to be able to in interview you at that time. All right. So thank you to everyone. I have to get going. Thank you for watching. I hope my question, your questions were answered. And if I couldn't get to your question, hopefully I can get to it next time. Have a great night.